what happens. There we go. We've got a. Uh, there we go. Got a quorum, so we can have a meeting. It's 6:30 on uh, January 2nd. The agenda's been out uh, appropriately. Uh, see, we got some public here, and maybe we ought to. Uh, I I'm willing to move the agenda around to accommodate uh, Mr. Weichel. Weichel, W-I-C-A-L. Weichel. Um, if if anybody else wants to, otherwise we can leave I'll it where a, it is. I'll make a motion. If you I'll second it. I have no problem with that. What did Mr. Weichel hear about? He's here about the 95 Williams Road, Road rock removal. Okay. okay. Awesome. And uh, it's the number six on the agenda, so if we could pull it up to number two, or number one, actually, after call to order, and um, get him home. I've heard watching a planning board meeting is like watching paint dry. <laughs> so <laughs> maybe you don't want to <laughs> sit through too much of this. But we'll do our best to accommodate you. Does everybody have um, the material that goes along with this subject matter? It's in your packet. Yes. It looks like this. This is the okay. first page. All right, so we're looking for that document. It says good morning. Yeah, it starts with good morning. All right. And it has attached photos. So that's a pretty thick document. That's six, eight pages here. A uh, little background. I believe there's a uh, solar system at 91. Williamsville Road that is primarily located on the eastern side of its lot and on the western side of its lot is wetlands and a uh, what I think without a survey what I think is a rock wall that divides the two properties the, the 91 and for lack of a better term I'm going to call the um, lot with the house on it 93 because the next one is 95 right so I, I think looked at the photos online they would be much better okay um, so on I believe there's a rock wall between 91 and 93 in addition to that along the Williamsville Road uh, and private property boundary uh, along the along the road, there's a uh, rock wall that that fronts the road. Um, I'm going by memory and some old photos that uh, Christina dug up from Google Earth, was it? Or Google, Google Earth, Drive yes. By? Uh, yeah, it was Google Earth photos. They did mm -hmm. it in 2011. We tried to get a before picture. These are the pictures you have uh, in front yeah. of you. Yeah, Do someday we'll get hooked up so we can. Do yes. this thing or have, have a, some kind of a projector. Yeah, I, I saw Chris yeah. Christine's, they were better. Yeah, um, yeah these are printouts. They uh, don't come out as well in all. black and white. I believe. The other thing I'd like to say is that Williamsville Road is on the Scenic Roads list. And I'd like Alice to tell us what she found in addition to the Scenic Roads list. It's too bad Craig isn't here. He's our Scenic Roads guy. Yes. Oh. Uh, but Filling in for Craig, <laughs> you found <laughs> you found well, another law. I'm just familiar with this. Um, is that on? Here? Was familiar with this, so I mentioned Christine? it. And that is, that if you have a wall that's dividing no, properties, copy, so like it's that. it's also illegal to take that wall down. And it was basically a very old law, I think, probably put in place for surveyors because of those walls are monuments for surveyors. Um, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be covered by our scenic roads unless it, 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 it you know, was in the easement, came down through the easement. Um, it, it presently has a very small penalty, but that doesn't mean that if you went to court, you couldn't also get restitution to put it back. I don't know. And I also don't know whether this gentleman, if you, if you buy the lot on both, you know, if you own the lots on both sides of the wall, yeah. then it would appear not to apply because it's a boundary wall. Um, but, anyway. but I, I think that is not the case is that not in the this case? instance. I, we just learned oh, that 91 is owned by True Green. Okay. And 93, as I call it, is owned by somebody. And 95 is owned by 
somebody, maybe somebody else, I'm not sure. Okay. But the wall between 91 and 93, I believe, is a wall on a property boundary, and I'm only basing that on going out there and seeing a stake with a orange tape on it at the end of the wall. That was in the photo. As it, <coughs> as it comes perpendicular to the hard road. You're talking about this one right here? Yeah, yeah. that one. That's it right there. Okay. It's in the photo. Yeah. Call <laughs> 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 that a wall. Yeah, it so, looks like it's been dismantled, but it's yeah, still This is the remains. Now, Alice, uh, oh, do you, can you get us all copies of that state law, or did you guys get copies of it? Oh, Alice I sent it around, I think. I just sent no, it to Christina. Oh. So let me make copies real quick. You might make a copy for Mr. I don't think. Michael? Yes, I'll just cut it. You know, it's, it's not under our regulatory authority. It's really a basic, but they keep every year they try to bring it up to get the penalties made greater. To what do you mean the by what do you mean by not under our authority? Well, I mean it's not. It doesn't say who enforces it. Well, but but it, it isn't necessarily not under our authority either. It's not excluded. I um, and I didn't do any research on it. Yeah, but we could. Well, who would enforce but I it? Thought the building inspector. Under our well, we, it, oh. it, you know, it's one of these very, you'll see it, no, very straightforward not. law. Okay. So it's illegal to remove a boundary wall. But it doesn't stipulate who's right. the enforcement aspect. Uh, the general bylaw on yeah. scenic roads, okay. we'll get there. It's got to get <laughs> established <laughs> that we have, that we have uh, authority to enforce it. I gave mine. Oh. oh. Um, I gave mine to Bill. I mean, to uh, Tom. Tom. There we go. We're passing them around. I'm looking at... Our general bylaws. Um, this is the statute. Yes, right there. I mean, this isn't the text of the statute. No, that's all. It, that's all it gave me, though. That's what came through on the email. Oh, all right. Well, it just sent over the hyperlink. Too many border wall. That is what I sent her. That. She couldn't click numbers. it and get the statute, so yes, it's very old. You looking for the enforcement? Yeah, I I'm at the it. end of uh, I'm at the end enforcement violation. Oh, here it is. Uh, I'm looking at 32.6.1 on page 72 of the general bylaws in our little orange book. Uh, this bylaw shall be administered by the planning board and enforced by the planning board, building inspector, tree warden, department of public works directors, and or others designated by the town administrator. Um, we're kind of first on the list, and uh, so we're going to act on this. Also, we spoke to yeah. Brian. With the authority. To, oh, you did? Yes, I, I put that in the email to all of you. Ooh, I missed that comment. What did you say? That I spoke to Ryan, um, and he said to check with the others on the list. So I talked to uh, Travis at the DPW, and he stated that um, he drove by and without a before picture, he couldn't. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I did it, see that. It's yeah. really hard to mm -hmm. tell. Uh, I talked to the building inspectors, and they said that uh, they didn't really, because we're currently going through Gardner, they said they didn't really want to weigh in on this yep. at the moment, but they, they felt that if they just put it back the way it was, they didn't see any <laughs> harm to it. And uh, that was Ryan's opinion as well, but he said that the planning board obviously well, gave I it to them. And I actually talked to the gentleman responsible who admitted that they'd taken, they had taken rocks out. Who is that? Um, I put his email Chapman. in here. I'm sorry. Chapman? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Brett Chapman. There's his attachment one to that per, um, to the back of oh, the first I page. Yep. Um, I sent that to email to all of you. Um, that they did take it out, um, that they are willing to make it better. You know, they apologize and want to make it things right. So it's just a matter of determining what is right and then asking them to do it. All right. I'm, I'm up, uh, up to that point. Point. Now let's go one more step. This all unrolled um, by the owner of this land and his engineer going to the Conservation Commission and saying, we're going to put a, I'm going to paraphrase it, we're going to put a solar system in the back there and there's some wetlands and there was a whole two or three Conservation Commission meetings on it. And I congratulate the Conservation Commission on now being televised, so you can go and look at them. And uh, I did. And the relevant, me most relevant meeting, I believe, Mr. Weichel attended. Let me out. 
check. And uh, and um, I believe the, mo the most relevant meeting is no is labeled on YouTube as November seventh, but it's really December seventh, or maybe it's December yeah, November fifth, and it's really no December fifth. But the, the early the low number November meeting is really the one you want, but it's really happened in December. It's mislabeled. So. Uh, if you really care to, you can watch that meeting. Craig? What was the gist of it? The gist of it was that the select uh, the uh, Conservation Commission said, we don't, we don't do stone walls. And I was a little disappointed in that. Craig has pointed out correctly, I think, that the boards need to work together because this scenic roads activity is kind of slipping down the crack. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, I think we ought to clean up our own act first, obviously. Uh, like on our website, we say, before you do anything, see the tree warden. But maybe we ought to also say, check on scenic roads. Right. And, and uh, we could put that up in bold print. And we should talk to the Board of Health and the Conservation Commission. And I think this was his plan, to, to give credit to Craig. He was going to talk to these various boards and say, hey, give this some prominence. Give this some some visibility. Um, that's all I got. Let's uh, turn it over. Anybody else? Just I want to hear from our guests too, but yeah, I just certainly. think that we should put the application on as the well link, as the, scene, the link for the, the link to the application. Yeah. How about Should the I link for the application, and then maybe the other boards that would be appropriate for that app for that process, so it's all right there. Right. Make, makes it easy for somebody if they or, want to say that. Or if question. somebody files that application with us, have Christina circulate it to the other people on the we list. We have one actually that just is going through. We have yeah, it I saw that. On the 9th, we'll be having an application. It was actually very good but because he wanted to get a permit for the driveway. So he went over and said, oh, nope, not without Scenic Road. Awesome. Uh, you have to go to, back to the planning board and get that finished, and then you can come back to me. Oh, that's mm -hmm. good. So Sounds like we've captured. We the are getting a little bit more. So the process yeah. is getting better. The attention exactly. of the DPW. Right. Now, if we can get Board of Health and and uh, Concom, we'll, we can make. If you just send an email, it goes. I've already told them, but it's, the better way is to send an email to the Board of Health, and it goes out to all of us. So. Okay, I, I don't know about that, but. Oh, I'm just that would be great. Okay. Yeah. Now here's the problem. We're focused tonight on the scenic roads. Next week, it'll be some other law. And we'll have to put a sign up for everybody. Hey, be aware of Law B. And the next week, it'll be Law C. And how do you get the public and these people that do projects to read our bylaws before they start moving dirt around with a bulldozer? That's kind of tough. Yeah, it's yeah. real hard. Um, I know so that that's Patty was, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. No. I know that Patty was looking into something. Um, certain other small towns in the area have a welcome to this town packet. Mm -hmm. That basically, when someone moves into the town, they are um, basically given a, a summation of yes, some of the are. things they need yeah, to be yeah, aware of. And that way, you know, because not everybody was here when the bylaw was, went into effect, they're made aware of just the high points and who to contact if, if they're doing X, Y, or Z. Yeah, there's also out of town owners. Oh, well, I don't. I don't believe this gentleman lives in town. Not sure, but it doesn't sound like he does. Yeah. All right. So, is it time to any other comments before we turn it over to Mr. Weichel? Please, come on up. Take oh. a take a guest chair. Okay. Sit, talk into the microphone. You're on TV. Oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> no I forgot to say, <clears throat> this meeting is digitally recorded and uh, is broadcast live and also uh, recorded so that it can be broadcast at a later date on other media. Sorry, I forgot to say that. Well, um, about the whole wall thing. Um, well, they came in and they took all the walls out, like all the way down one side. This is before they had uh, the um, Conservation Committee's permission to touch the land, so they removed wall on each side of the property like all the way down on both sides of both the sides yeah. east and west yeah uh, boundary line it probably goes back like it's a long six, wall seven hundred feet oh my goodness yeah like six feet rocks. wide and the thing that bothers wall. me about it oh yeah and it's just completely destroyed on each side i well, walked i walked walked east side which i probably wasn't supposed to but i did anyway 
What would bother me about it was the information on one of the emails stipulated that they did it on the weekends. Yeah. yeah. Just kind of. Well, um, it's yeah, illegal whether it's a Sunday or a Friday. Correct. Right. Right. <coughs> right. Yeah, so they did all that. Plus, we had some sand that dropped off our property, and the guy actually turned into their property, and they told him to dump the sand back where they were taking all the rocks. You mean it wasn't due to your address? It was, it was due to my address, but it was dumped across the street. By mistake? Yes. Oh. Guy goes, yeah, just drop it off right here. So that was kind of shady. Did you pay for his sand? Oh, no. Oh. No. no, I just paid for my own. We had to bring more. <laughs> yeah. Um, what is the, I want to phrase it as positively as I can, but what is the actual complaint? Um, I think it's just that they took the, the walls that were, because they were all like six feet wide, three feet tall or more, um, just taking the scenic rock walls, basically. Well, the scenic rock wall runs along the road, yeah. parallel to the road yeah. the at the kind of <coughs> where our town's easement ends yeah. and the private property begins. Right. But I think you're reporting they took away the, what I'll call the east side, yes. which was a boundary wall up with 61. They're both boundary, boundary walls. Well, on, on s the boundary wall was 65. Am I hearing you correctly that the same guy owns 60, uh, I'm sorry, not 65, 95. Uh, the same guy owns 93 and 95? Yes. Okay. And he kind of did it without the, the, uh, the board knowing. The, the board, um, which board? The um, conservation. conservation. Conservation Committee, yeah. yeah. So they're doing work on the property even before they had their okay to, to work on the property. Okay, we'll let the Conservation Commission deal with that uh, in terms of them getting a jump before they got their EPA number and, yeah. and all that, DEP number, whatever it is they right. do. Uh, their number. All right. <coughs> in the Conservation Commission meeting, and I think in a note from Christina, somewhere this, the, the gentleman that owns the project or owns the land or owns something um, said he wanted to make it right. Yes. I'm all for uh, restoration rather than punishment by fine. I don't know what we'd do with $300. It wouldn't <laughs> begin to address this this uh, <laughs> this wall situation. So um, in cases like this we either write him a letter and invite him to come in or, or um, have him submit a plan, that's what we do, plan. Have him submit a plan showing on the property line, a property layout, just what's gonna, what it's gonna look like when he's done restoring. Um, that's one approach. Anybody else got any ideas? I think that he should, you know, file the scenic bylaw application form first, first put on it remedial, and I think he should also have a plan prepared because if you look at the pictures, you can see from the border wall, that wall runs all the way down the road, mm. that it needs to be conforming to that height, <coughs> width, width. Yeah, um, it's going to be a lot of work. And well, he says he took, well, I mean, I don't know whether you agree, his comment was they only removed 10% of the rocks from the front. I don't know. But it seems to me a surveyor could, or somebody more than just the landowner who's the yeah. miscreant here, yeah. should tell us how wide it was, how high it should be, and have a plan. All right. Um, Submitted with this. The, the scenic road application is an excellent place to start. I think you're right. And it's mm -hmm. remedial, it's not initiative. And, and um, Normally what happens is we have our uh, planning board engineer, Bill Murray, who uh, has probably been through something like this and may be able to read the lay of the land and, and kind of conceptualize where this wall was and where it should be when it comes back. Yeah, that's and true. he should do it pretty soon uh, before the snow flies. He's <laughs> gonna fly them off. Well, all right, then after the <laughs> snow melts. But um, we, we ought to get him involved. Now he's not free. Uh, usually the applicants or landowners pay his pay for his services and so it's chicken and an egg do we ask the 
owner to submit a plan and then have Bill go out and survey and see how, how good the plan represents what would be restoration. I like that one. Yeah, uh, I, like yeah, I said it, and then I said I'm not sure there's another one. <laughs> Should we get a quote from Bill first so that we can make sure that um, the gentleman is willing to pay? Well, I mean, because we can't have Bill go out without, you know, knowing he's going to get paid by someone. Yes, we will not. We will not um, instruct Bill to proceed until we have a check in hand. Um, beyond the point where we write Bill a letter and say, "Here's what's going on. Go look at it and tell us how much it's going to cost." Okay, so we get a proposal from Bill. We hand that the proposal amount plus application fees and whatever else comes in to um, our account and Bill does the work and we replenish we, we pay him back uh, we pay him mm -hmm. for that work so it's a in and out account what do they call them revolve mm -hmm. and um, do we want this gentleman to show up here I uh, would not not having him show up he was able to get to a conservation commission meeting. I saw him sitting in the back there. And oh, there you go. He then. participated. <coughs> it seemed like a good guy. He just mm -hmm. got to get to him. Right. Yeah, I think it would be appropriate to ask him to come in. Right. And a nice letter, I think, would be an appropriate response to it, too. He might not have known. Well, no, ignorance right. of the law doesn't make it anymore. No, I'm just saying he might not have known. So I, my opinion is when you send the letter out, that we could be more... Kind of. Conciliatory? Just... Look, we found out this is a violation. We'd like to have you come and talk to us and blah, 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 blah. I'd like to do it in that way, but personally, just because I think that's, let's come in and talk about it. If he starts giving us an attitude, we can change our response. Right. Did, am I correct that you said you spoke to him? Yes, oh. several times, and I've been in email right. communication with him. Well, okay. We don't need to write you all fancy letters. Why don't you call him up? Okay. Tell him exactly what we're going to do. Yep. We're going to get a proposal from our engineer. We're going to ask him to reimburse our engineering costs. Mm -hmm. We're going to ask him to fill out a uh, scenic road application with plans that are remedial or restorative or mm -hmm. something like that. And then uh, come on in and we'll unroll the plans and have Bill Murray here and we'll put forth a course of action. And I think we all kind of know what it is, but right. we want it restored. Mm -hmm. I'd like to put a time li limit on that. Within 60 days, 30 days. Yes. How about 30? 30 for him to come in or to yeah, submit the, the application? Yeah, well, he can come in and. Early meet. February. Later. Meet with, yes, with us. Our, our and if February he can't get meeting. hold of an architect or we get 10 feet of snow, you know, he can plead right. his cause and we'll right. give him an extension. Right. Right, but at least he came in to initiate. Right. 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 Good idea. Good answer just for. Good idea. I have a right right, right over here for my. Young visitor, go go with. I can just I don't bring him to the door over here. No, absolutely. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to interrupt. We're going to miss her. If you'll excuse me. What is her first name? Come on, sweetie. Alexis. 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 Good night. You're you're banned from the meeting, sweetie. <laughs> <laughs> One more question. This letter relates to restoration of the front wall. Yes. Why? Why are we limiting? No, I'm just asking. That's your that's my oh. question. Oh, with oh. regards to scenic roads application um, does the scenic road I don't believe extends to the sidewalls no so are we going to simply ask that as a, a caveat that I we also I don't see why if the gentleman takes a positive attitude he says mm, I made a mistake we forgive him the mistake we don't impose fines but we ask for a complete restoration rather than half a restoration and if he if he agrees to do that we don't have to agonize over the sidewall. I believe there's there's a sufficient law to say, you know, we either cooperate or we litigate, and I'd prefer to cooperate. Now, the other, the west side um, is a different question. If he owns both sides of that, then... There's another uh, boundary law. Yeah, I, I don't know that... Well, he, he should come in with his deeds and say, yeah, I own both sides of this. And that's the end of the issue. And that's the end of that one, I think. Unless According someone interprets this. the law differently. What do you think? You need a motion. Oh, <coughs> make then a motion. We do what we just before discussed. Before we do that, so <laughs> the 
wall in the front is the only one that you want him to be responsible for. No, no. That's the one that's specifically <coughs> designated in the scenic law, the okay. scenic road law. The, so the, we'll call that the horizontal one, the vertical ones. There's a vertical east and a vertical west. west. So the vertical, he, he owns both of those. No. On the east side, 91 Williamsville Road. Okay. There's a different owner. What's their name? True Green. We think True Green owns that. Okay. And so that is a rock wall that is, is the boundary. boundary, the boundary. Being according to the state law. Mm -hmm. This one is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. He, I think he owns both sides, but he's gonna have to come in and prove it. He's gonna bring his deeds in, or his what I, in can I ask a question? What if he sells one of the properties? Well, um, I, I think there's a hundred hypotheticals. Right, I'm just throwing it out there. If you sell a property now, it's a <laughs> all I'm gonna ask him to do is prove that it is what we thought it was. He owns both sides. If he can't prove that with a real deed, not just come in and say it. Oh, no, no, we've got to see the paperwork. Yeah. If he is the, quote, developer of this project, he isn't necessarily the yeah. landowner. Correct. And and um, he's going to have to produce something of evidence that he's, that he's got there. both sides. Right. And that he's legally there if he's not the yeah. owner. And then then we ask Bill Murray his opinion. We're all iconic experts, especially me, and I don't mean to be, but Bill is. And we get Bill involved and we ask him, mm -hmm. what's the scoop here and how do we do this? So should I wait for a response from Bill Murray before I email or speak to this gentleman? No, don't wait. Okay. Because we, we're, if we're going to give him a time limit, we got to give him a starting gun. Okay. Could I have the, the read back of the motion, please? Uh, there hasn't. All we I heard from Tom was, right. Tom was. Tom was. I'm sorry. Tom read said, makes a motion to do what we just said we would. <laughs> That's what he said. <laughs> um, okay. Read the plan of action. Uh, the plan of action at the moment is we're going to get a proposal from Bill Murray for reconstruction of the wall. We're going to call um, Mr. Chapman and discuss uh, filing a scenic road application and coming to the February meeting to discuss that scenic road application. And providing? And doing complete recon restoration of um, the rocks that were removed. And providing ownership okay. information. Yep. And Bill Murray, we're not asking him for a wall reconstruction. We're asking him for the uh, engineering and oversight of the wall reconstruction. He doesn't do anything. Well, he doesn't uh, do any rock moving. He does watching and looking at plans. And do you think a plan is necessary? Because that's not in there. I think a plan is necessary for a couple of reasons. Uh, I did drive by there, and there's wetlands on. Mm -hmm. Hold your arms up again. <laughs> there's, there's, there's wetlands over here. If you're Williamsville Road, Mm -hmm. And this is the yeah. east side. There's water piling up against this rock wall, and that means they're going to have to be working in wetlands. And we really ought to go back and uh, have Bill Murray, who was also a wetlands yeah. guy, uh, figure out how we're going to do this without yeah, I'm trying to pull them up going them. backwards. You know, get it done. We're working within 100 feet of a wetland, and yeah. there's some some rules about that that the conservation knows better than us. Um, I was a little disappointed that the Conservation Commission, well, I don't, I don't know what they did. I shouldn't be disappointed because I don't know what they did. But I, was, I guess I was a little disappointed in the owner wow. that he starts work before he's got all his permits in place. That's not a good policy. No. Well, I would do that, though. Yes. Let's get it done, especially with the season we had this year and everything was wet. Everybody was rushed. <laughs> so. Well, that damn wall is demolished. Yes. Is this what it looked like before? Uh, no, no. That thing was probably three. Feet I remember nine, seeing it, but it's been so long. How many trucks did they drag out of there? Oh, constantly for probably three months, just all summer long. Three months. Yeah, they took oh. that whole wall that went down the the opposite side of the house. They just took the whole wall. The town center side About of the house. About six, eight hundred feet of it. Wow. And the same on the other side also. Three months. Yeah. He made Every day. Of, he made Maybe pretty he good money on that. He, he <laughs> says he didn't make money, but well, when you well. buy a house, you're automatically not. You can't get recompense, recompense for. No, but I mean, I don't know whether he was making money selling these rocks. I find it hard to believe. Either way, they're taking the rocks out. 
you're you're doing you're basically doing his job for him, so which is saving him money if you take the rocks. It doesn't matter if there's you know? money. We but don't. He, but that's not. And right. then the other person but sells the rocks. Why would he? Makes the money what back. personal? If he doesn't <coughs> land own the land on the other side, what's his purpose in taking down the wall? Uh, they're putting up solar panels all throughout that whole side, so all the stone walls have to be gone. Money doesn't enter into our decision. <coughs> we don't care if his solar system makes money or loses money. We don't care if he's financially. Is it Mr. Solvent. Chapman that owns the solar system? He's in charge. Part, part of it, yes. I see. I believe he's in, he works for the company. I don't believe he's the owner. I think he owns part of it. Oh, is that what it is? I don't okay. think he owns all of it. No. I, I just all think right. it's interesting, it, to my way of thinking, to know whether this is a business <coughs> decision or a hapless. Mm. I don't think we'll ever know. Land if it goes, on for, if it goes on for three months, it's not yeah. somebody putting right. a couple steps in. And he said he didn't know that they were taking the stone walls. Three months? Well, I won't judge him. Yeah, well, yeah. it's possible. Yeah. I'd rather hear from the gentleman yeah. what he yeah. has to say and mm -hmm. we'll move forward from that. And talk to yeah. Now, everybody their as opportunity. As the person who has brought the issue in, does our plan of action make sense to you? And yeah, are we it sure does. Okay. Is there something else we should do that you know about that we don't know about? No, that's pretty much it. All right, then I make a motion <coughs> that we carry out the plan as Christina just read it, or if she wants to read it again. <laughs> okay, I'd like to, no, can I we refine it? I'd like to say that we make a, we're gonna make a motion that we're gonna contact this gentleman, Mr. Chapman, All right. to do A, B, and C, um, just so it's really clear. Yeah, we're, we're gonna make a motion that, take it, Christina. Okay, we're gonna make a motion. Um, it's twofold. One, we're going to contact Bill Murray for an engineering oversight of reconstruction of the walls, both at the front and in the wetlands and in the other areas surrounding the property. And then we're also going to uh, contact Mr. Chapman uh, in order to have him fill out a scenic road application within the 30-day timeline uh, to appear at our next our February meeting with uh, proof of ownership and to discuss with him the complete restoration of all rocks removed. And I'd like to say to prepare a complete application, maybe an amendment, while well, we haven't really moved it yet, mm -hmm. and a professionally a plan prepared by an engineer showing the restoration areas including the dimensions of the walls oh the chat to be Mr. restored bring in yeah. yes okay. an, en an engineered a professionally engineered plan with dimensions and yep. descriptions showing wetlands and wetlands if any right. uh, not that this makes any difference at all but i'm just curious do you see this wall or is this part of your property it's across the street and so when you drive by you do see the wall you, I've seen it. you did now, see now the wall. i know about it oh, i've yeah. seen it so you look out your window and the wall over there is no longer there Kind of, yeah. Now, well, forgive, you know, I'm sorry, with regards to the professionally prepared engineering plan to reconstruct, isn't that what Bill Murray is? No. no. Bill Murray will look at their plan and say, this ah. plan is good or this plan is not good. Thank you. It's deficient or it's adequate. Thank you. He's our technical eyeballs. Mm -hmm. Got it. Thank you. All right, so that's the end of our activity, including, including the friendly Very amendment good. there. I'll second that motion. Very good, Bill. All in favor? Aye. 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 Should we? Excellent. Sorry to be so formal, but we oh, got to do this written no, down, no. And oh, yeah. or yeah, we no. forget. Yeah. How wide? Probably Approximately. six feet. At least six feet, yeah. Wow. It looks wide. Yeah. Yeah, there's some of these walls around here that are more than six feet. Yeah, I have some like that. Well, wife. that was all done by the, when they were clearing <laughs> the, the, the rocks you. over, and that was there. Yeah. Yeah, There's a lot of rocks here. Thank you. Have a good hey, night. Very Thanks. Nice meeting Thank you. you. Nice meeting you. Thanks for coming in, and you're certainly welcome back in February to see all this stuff. Great. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. No, I'd love to have a six foot wall on my property. I have one. <laughs> oh, you you. Six? I bet if you put a measuring tape on it, they're a lot wider than six. They're funny. They're, they Sweet look. Wild. It depends how many rocks they found in the land. They're oh, right, yeah. It. It, what yeah. are they doing? Okay, now, um, is there any question about our um, jurisdiction on the Removing Stone Walls, MDL Chapter 266, Section 105? We're kind of, we're not claiming jurisdiction as much as we're asking this, the gentleman that owns this property, to see if he will comply. 
we're not coming down here with a heavy hand. No. Should uh, we investigate as to what the next step would be if we had to enforce it, so we know it at a later time if we need to? I'd rather not go down hypotheticals. Yeah, we have yeah, nothing yeah. to do without. I, I yeah, send, yeah. send you all, I, I, I thought she could click on this and it would print it out. It's a very simple statute, and since it dates from the late I think I did for mid 1800s. It yes. is. It says shall be pay a fine of ten dollars. Right. It says it in there. Yeah. Um, but right. we're not worried about fines. But I do think that restoration is. Well, see, I have time. Generally, in addition to that, but I'm not sure it's our public. You know, whether it's an abutter that has that right to enforce it, whether a court could say, well, this is beyond the zoning board's. I don't, I don't know. Think Let's see what he if he'll come back and I don't think it's a very far reach from the scenic road to I this would, law. I feel comfortable going for it. And but, what we're really looking for is cooperation. These laws and these fines and stuff are like a club. Mm -hmm. All you want to do is wave it around. You never want to actually hit anybody with it. You just want to say that sometimes. Well, this is this well. is what it is. Now if we put inflation on a ten dollar fine in eighteen hundreds, he couldn't afford the it. Thousands, no. yeah. yeah. But right mine at the bottom here, there's a little small print. You didn't see that? It says per rock. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Only kidding. All right. How would we do? We, we got through that one? Yes. yes. We did. Yeah. We did very well. Thanks for everybody's help. That was a good one. Can I make a suggestion mo motion that we go back to our agenda? Excellent, Bill. Yeah, I'm looking that. at January 2nd. Meeting minutes review. Yeah, meeting minutes of uh, November 7th. Oh, and would you add him to our February agenda? start building your the way you do it uh, you build tentative agendas and if you could add this last issue to the tentative agenda we'll start building it. and thanks for all your help on this Dig, digging up the pictures and everything it was very helpful okay. yeah, it was very nice thank you November 7th meeting minutes now I wanted to know you guys actually already had a copy of these at a previous meeting all um, right do you still have them because if they were 19 pages long and I didn't want to print them out without but if you don't have I don't, them, I can I don't make copies have them with now. Me. I, November seventh. I. There's only eight that are actually minutes. The rest are. Yeah, the attachments. rest are just attachments. That's true. Yes, you. you uh, didn't you email you want that me to, to make us? Copies? You emailed yes. them to us. Did yes. you email that? Yes. yes, I did. Yeah, I read it. Yeah. Yeah, I'd have to brush my brain. Page by page. Yeah, page. yeah, we um we skipped over that because there were two people missing at the last meeting, so we didn't approve the minutes. That's oh, right. that's right. That's right. It was January, tw uh, September 26th that we agonized over. Yes. And did approve ultimately. Yes. We brought up the seat. Mm -hmm. um, on the January 20th, uh, I'm sorry, on the September 26th meeting minutes that we already approved, we. Um, recognize that the meeting minutes were kind of a summary, as they probably should be, mm. but they didn't capture their verbatim motion. Right, so that's when we decided that all motions now had to be verbatim. Yeah. So that's why whenever I go back through, um, I don't do shorthand here. I watch the video, and um, I write it down that way when I do the minutes. I'd, awesome. I'd like to see us go back and verbatim, verbatimize? Uh, make the motion that's recorded in September 26th verbatim uh, because I think it creates a, a problem when it's not. I'm not sure I'd have to look into how to amend minutes that have already been approved. Well, they, you can be amended. Yeah. Okay. If not, we just issue it as a separate document. But um, there's a significant difference between what's recorded in the meeting minutes and what's really on the videotape. The videotape goes on for discussion. In fact, you. Uh, I wrote an eight-page yeah, transcript. You, uh, yeah, you transcript. Well, maybe we just attach the transcript to the meeting minutes. I can do that if you like. Yeah, there'd be a lot of work to go back again. Yeah, we're not. Yeah. We're not to go back. Just right. click on, click them I together somehow the electronically. The okay. Yep. So that we uh, we can recover all your hard work without Making doing a lot harder. of work. Okay, I'll attach the work. transcript to the meeting minutes. That'd be great. And I'll post that. All right now, let's look at November seventh. We got a. I, I did not bring my uh, old copies. Here. 
Can I make copies for anybody? I can or make copies just if me. you'd like, or if you I guys read can it read before. them. I've read it. I have yeah, a copy if I anyone else needs to read it. I read it before I read it. I okay. went through all the paperwork online, and it looks fine to me. Did you did you read it, Tom? We can read it I'm trying to remember what November 7th was. Okay. Todd Williams was here. Trey Zikowski. It was a long year. Everybody was doing the the uh, Robert's Rules thing. Yeah, it was the long meeting. I, I can't do this just right as I sit here. Um, I'd, I'd be wasting everybody's time, but I remember this one. And it was pretty contentious. People were all set to... Anybody have a big problem if I take this home refresh my memory and come back next week come back yeah next week we're gonna meet a week. make a motion we, we accept them on our next meeting next I, week. For, I forgot postpone. it was only a week away we'll postpone. thank you very much for accommodating me I just I've just been working on something else and this yep. did not surface for me and I apologize it was on the agenda and I should have had it done true green They uh, came in, the Burton engineer came in, he stood there and he talked about the project and I said to him that we really need a, about a $2,000 check to fund Mr. Murray to go down and do a survey. Yeah, but they called it a uh, permit con conditions compliance or yeah, something, compliance. or compliance. Certificate. Yeah. And um, he said, okay, and he left the room and haven't heard from him since. No, I thought there was a letter going to be written to him regarding that. Um, I called him up. Okay. I called up uh, Noah. Well, Siegel. well, first off, I think True Green sent in a letter. Yes, it's here. Yes. About it's who owns what and they're right. the new owners. Right. And while that's clarifying, it doesn't address the issue. So I called Noah. Siegel, that's his, Noah Siegel, right? Yes. I called Noah and left a message and didn't get anything back from him. Um, would you, can I make a motion that Christina calls Noah Siegel if in a couple days she doesn't get a response, she starts with a letter. And it's pretty simple. He should talk to his Burton engineering guy, Greg, somebody, and, uh, and uh, get the lay of the land from the meeting, and uh, or I shouldn't say lay of the land, I should say plan of action from the meeting, and um, comply. I'll second that. Well, it's a long motion. Contact, <laughs> contact True Green <laughs> and, Either term, and, and dun them, D-U-N-N, dun them for their check. Or Mr. Murray. For Mr. Murray, either. On phone or in writing? Yeah, I don't care how she does it. Or both. Know. But if they're if they're if they give you the no return phone call thing, mm -hmm. send them an email. Is it all right if I also um, got, get in touch with uh, Nicholas Mindkimi, the person who wrote the email? He said that it's okay to contact either of them with regards to this true green matter. He's at the bottom of the letter here. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. but it's contact just, both. It's a, oh, there we go. Yeah, do both of them. Okay. I'll second that motion. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All in favor? All right. Aye. Aye. Um, gravel pit report. Yeah, gravel pit report. We got about 300. And, well, the, the one we were focused on, I think, was Marinelli with Correct. the illegal dog. What do you got, Bill? Nothing with me. You didn't bring the 350 tons? No. <laughs> it's kind of heavy. I apologize, folks. I thought tonight we were reviewing. I kind of. Yes. So I apologize for that. I didn't prepare or bring anything with me. Have you been down there, or have you? Uh, I have haven't been down there except for the first time I went down with Tom. Okay. But I've been out there a hundred times over the years. While I was a police officer, and I've seen it many times. The pile? Oh, it's the piles. Yes. Are you found getting bigger? Uh, they, I don't think they've grown. Okay. I they look the same to me, but again, it's from memory. But um, in talking with the officer, I went down there. He says, "Yeah, these are the same ones. You know, I haven't seen any difference. Nobody's been out here." 
and you can't say the evidence on any of the tracks out there either after all this time. Um, what would be our next step? Well, I recall that during the Marinelli special permit deliberations, um, they said they would, quote, take care of it. And I don't think that means dig a hole and bury it. I think it means take it out of there. Right. Because it was material that was from a construction project of some type, and we don't really know what it is. So um, maybe we should write a letter to Marinelli and say, we're waiting for you. What, what's your plan of action? Probably not gonna happen in the dead of winter, but we can get them going and get them thinking about it. Now, where would I find all the documentation for this, these meetings and all this stuff so I can get myself really verbalized on it? Well, do you need them for this letter? I don't know. All right, then um, let's do the letter thing. So we want and to make a motion. I'll make a motion. I'll make a motion and ask Christina to uh, make a contact letter with the Mar Marinelli's to a please ask us for the update on the removal of the, what should I call it? Debris. Construction debris. debris. On the pits on Pitchover Road, in the pits. And Christina, you're free to call, and if calling is an effective, write a letter. You can, you're authorized to construct a very simple one paragraph letter and okay. get it done. Okay. As, as I know, you will do well on it. Okay. So if that's the motion. Well, before we are seeing if this has been an issue for how many years with them? 15. What about a um, registered letter? They have to sign for it. Oh. Should we do that up front or wait and just maybe send them an email or a first letter? If they come right back to us, then we don't have to spend the money. If they don't reply in a timely fashion, then I would suggest, yeah, that's, that's a, a good way to go. Small amount to pay. That's up, that's up to you guys. I'll I'm pay just, it. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I watched that whole, I mean, we worked on this permit or non-permit for months. I think it was 15 or 18 months. Wow. And, uh, yeah. and um, nothing ever happened. So, I like your suggestion. You what? I like your suggestion. It costs six bucks. Okay. And you Looks know fine. you know it's delivered, and you force them to acknowledge it. They sign <coughs> it. They give back a little green card. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you know they have it. Yeah. Yeah. Please send it registered. Yep. There's a couple addresses, but the, I understood the address in Waltham. On. Um, I can't remember the name of the street, but it's a regular numbered house in Waltham. Okay, and I'll look it up online just in case they've switched addresses. Okay. They also had a lawyer present in these meetings, mm -hmm. and I'd have to go to the file and dig that up. But the file is in our... I've seen it. It's pretty thick. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, then, if you know where it is... I'm going to invite you to look through it. <laughs> you said, where is it? And I well, and no, I did go and look. We, we spent a little bit one day, and that was a, wh a while back. But uh, um, I'll go start looking through it. Yeah, there was a lawyer's name. There was an engineering name. They had quite a team here. Uh, I thought they lived right up by Wizzle Road. No, that they, they maybe did time. it one time. But oh, they, I thought they still they no longer lived there. Okay. They retired from the moving dirt business and mm -hmm. moved away, I think. Um, is it clear? Yes. Okay. Because I don't have a second a on that, that would be motion. For solar I'll second it. Terrific. Thank you. Then uh, all, all in favor? All in favor. Aye. 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 Registered letter of Marinelli. One forty seven Williamsville Road. The concern here is that um, the land on which they're building the solar system, Borrego is building the solar system and there are, uh, there's a people that own the property. When the, when a solar system goes, yeah, when a solar system goes in, uh, at least two things happen and sometimes three things happen. One, they pay a pilot 
which is payment in lieu of taxes, mm -hmm. which is really payment in lieu of property taxes mm -hmm. on the stuff that's above ground, solar panels and transformers and all that stuff. And in this instance, Borrego is slated to pay between sixty-five and seventy thousand dollars a year. I've sat on those the pilot agreement and negotiated that out. And it's and what they do is they they, they start out the equipment is worth the tax this much in the beginning, and as it depreciates it out at the end, it will be worth less. So the town wouldn't get as much. So what they do is they do a level funding for that entire time. So every year the town gets the same amount of money. That's why they do the pilot. That's all part of that program. Which oh. I think is really good for the town. That's that's close, and you can do it that way. Mm -hmm. And Gardner does it that way. But what we did in this town, if I understand it correctly, and I haven't seen the final final permit or final final uh, um, pilot agreement, is that um, it is escalatable at I think two and a half percent per year, so that you get say $65,000 in year one, and in year 20, right. it goes up to about $103,000 mm -hmm. for a grand total of just um, straight ahead money. It's like a, like a, a million six or a million seven, mm -hmm. which is a pretty good 20 year payout. <coughs> That's the first thing that happens. The second thing that happens is the land that the property is built on, and in this case it's some 24, 25 acres, I think, is um, re-designated. Classified. Yeah. Is, classified. is the word classified? Yes, I believe so. I want to say it's not rezoned. It's re just reclassified mm -hmm. as industrial land. And it moves from forest taxation rate to industrial land taxation rate and every year, due to that, the town picks up another lump of money. And I don't know, we could do some back of the back of the envelope calculations. I think the land's worth about, in industrial sense, it's worth about $6,000 an acre. And it's, say, 20 acres. <coughs> and then our times our tax rate. So I can't do that in my head. Used to be able to, but I can't do that anymore. <laughs> A lot of brain cells ago. <laughs> But anyway, it's a significant amount of money. Then the third thing that happens to some situations is they have to um, establish that <coughs> the land, they have to move the land from uh, Chapter 61 to, um, for lack of a better term, I'm going to say regular land. Uh, chapter 61 is a tax advantaged category. Mm -hmm. and, and they have to pay the back taxes when they pull it out. They have to pay a certain number of years of back taxes. Mm -hmm. And when, um, and, and so that only happens once. That's a one-time payment. Correct. That's not an every year thing. Right. And the town gets the town gets a lump of money because it's come out of Chapter 61. Now, I was also reading lately that when you take Chapter 61 and you want to do something else with it, you change its use. Mm -hmm then it triggers what's called the right of first refusal for the town to step in and buy that land at market rate. And I'm pretty sure I'm right when I say market rate. That's um, right. Okay, Alice is nodding her head along with me here. <laughs> Thank you. Um, uh, and I'm really trying to say this to the public, not just us. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, uh, so there, there's a uh, option that the town can exercise when when you go into chapter 61 you recognize that you give the town this option and the town can option it when you're coming out of 61 and so you come out of 61 and the town gets an option to buy what's called the right of first refusal they can step in line and be the first purchaser of this land at market rate well I think that's good when the land is in some way precious or advantageous or, or of great value or strategic value, its position or its qualities. In this instance, um, the project developer has come into the select board and said, please waive that right. Don't, don't exercise your right to buy, have, have a right of first refusal. 
waive that right because we want to put a solar system in. And of course, then you start arguing about or evaluating whether the solar system is better than a park or, or a basketball court or whatever, whatever you're doing there. And um, in this instance, um, I've walked the land, I've looked at the plans, and the plans were attached to the, uh, to the letter that they sent regarding this waiver. And I would be, I would recommend that we, we, we don't grant the waiver. We would write a note to the select board saying we moved and voted that they grant the waiver. We're making a recommendation to the planning board. Is that right, Alex? The select board. Select, uh, select board, yeah. Am I doing that right? Because I, I, mean, I would, I would say we would have no objection to the granting of the waiver. It's really within their discretion. It is, but we we should stand up and be counted. Okay, but and that's we, why we he see no me. reason why it should not be granted. It would probably be deferential to them because okay. they are the people that. Right. All right. Um, the land is sloped. Yeah. It's not effectively uh, park land or, or precious land in the sense. Um, it, it's way in the back. It's got a long access road. It's not going to be like the, the uh, playground area up here or the recreation field right. where you can you can use it and feel like you're not isolated. We'd have to bust the kids out there. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. So long story short, I think the, uh, I would direct the planning board in my opinion, the planning board should recommend that the select board grant this waiver. And anybody else got any comments? I dragged dragged you through all that because I wanted the public to understand That's what's fine. going on. All right. It's good information. I think I think I'll second the motion um, to send an approval letter to the select board that, that we agree that uh, they should, it, with their discussion. I, I think you're making the motion, not second. I thought you just made it. No. no, I think I said I'd take a motion. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Okay, I'll make the motion that we draft the letter, send the letter to the selectmen, approving the granting of the, this waiver. All right. Through, I'm gonna, through the select board. I'm going to ask Alice to make a, a friendly amendment and there use her phraseology. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I, I, you I you had a phrase. Not. You just said it, and I can't remember it. it was that we have no we objection. We see no uh, reason why the waiver should not be granted by the select board. In this case, that sounds real. Direct and to the point. Yes. This is under discussion. We can make a second. Oh sure, yeah, I, I, Just um, I spent some time puzzling over this plan. Uh -huh. uh, and I, do they own the land on the side? You know, it's very blurry. Do I they own the land on either side of this as well? I can help you. And um, how much frontage is there actually on Williamsville Road? Uh, I can't tell you the number, but it's enough. Okay. Um, <coughs> they have got a they have got a permit in hand. Yes, from you, I saw that. Well, no, well, from the planning from the board, planning board in, May, in May last right? year. Yeah. They well, this own, has all been approved. Yes. Okay. They own a Long Williamsville Road. I, I can't get a camera on this, but um, they own a Long Williamsville Road. They own down this boundary line between them and another homeowner. They own farther down and around and back up and this land here back to Williamsville Road. Okay. This, so they have a big parcel. This box, detail two, is a blow up of this little squiggly section here. Yes. They, they really and, should have said. Yeah, they should have. You know, Why? Two. So this is their 25 acres that the solar field goes 25. in. 25.699 acres. And, and what is this land like on the other side of that, where the blow-up box is? Do where the know? who box? She's talking right here. What is Th the This is like? the solar system with the dotted right. line, right? So what is this land? In front of it. Oh, they have a house. They have a horse barn. Okay. Uh, they, they have, a, they have a driveway that comes down along this property line. Okay. And turns in and goes to a, a very nice uh, home and horse barn and, uh, you know, okay. paddock areas yeah, or whatever they yeah. call these. Okay. 
end, this driveway continues on down and provides a right of way to uh, what I think is DCR land back here. Great. Mm -hmm. And um, it's Thanks. very undeveloped. It does slope from a high point here down to what ultimately is a, is a Hubbardston Brook, I think. Um, or kind of started, there's a brook down here. That's okay. quite a ways. Thank, thanks. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, but I was just. It's uh, slope, uh, it's a little bit ledgy. Okay. Yeah. Oh, wow. It. <laughs> Great. <laughs> These are really good. Um, uh, it's a little bit ledgy, and they're, they're, uh, it's not prime land. It's. I just appreciate the background on the abutter. I knew you, you granted this. I don't want you to go over it, but no, I say who's the abutter and how well, does this work and what's going to look like is very this, helpful to me. This Thank solar you. field, I think, is is very distant from the closest house. I'm going to say over a thousand feet, and it's on the actual plans. There's a narrow <coughs> and a dimension to the neighboring house. Um, there's some wetlands here. That's why this driveway bends. There's a wetland in here. Um, there is a uh, slope away land, and they'll put a. Well, I can't remember exactly what's here, but it's um, available in great detail. Six, eight, ten drawings in our file, in the drawing roll. Thank you. And I'd be glad to go over it sometime if you want. We live through it. <laughs> Thank you. More than enough detail. Thank All you. Right. So. Yeah, All in favor. Because there is not a, there's not I'll a second. second. Could you read the motion, please? Yes. The original motion was uh, that we send a letter to the selectmen um, requesting um, that the waiver be granted. However, Alice made a friendly amendment. We see no reason why the waiver should not be granted. So, so, so. Right. And it's going to be a very brief letter. Is this something that I will be writing? If you wouldn't mind. Is that appropriate, everybody? Sounds yeah, good to me. I have okay. no problem. Okay. Now, it's got to get to them by their meeting Monday night. Okay, well, I'll do it tomorrow then. Do you work tomorrow? I do. Oh, tomorrow's, tomorrow's Thursday. Thursday. Yes. We okay. need a vote. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Bill. Keep me on track. <coughs> I will, and I will get this over to. Now, I think it is your turn, Christina. Yes. Uh, at the writing of this agenda, we had uh, several upcoming planning board matters. There were applications in progress. Just to let you know, we had an ANR and a scenic road application. The scenic road application has since been completed and will be at our next meeting. So um, we've already done the public notification of that uh, scenic road application on Healdville Road. And I'll be bringing all the information on uh, the 9th. Um, and this other one here for Gardner Road was in progress until this afternoon at 1 o'clock p.m. So now it is a completed application and I didn't know if the board wanted to review it now or put it on the agenda for next week. Well, That's appropriate thing. We, we don't need to do public notification with regards to an ANR. Once it is okay. complete, it can be brought before the, um, but you guys haven't had any chance to review this prior to the meeting, so I wanted to let you know about it. It, it was a, held up for several weeks because it was submitted by uh, someone who was an executor of a will. Uh, I had to have proof that he had his executoring <laughs> was up to date. Right. Uh, this is for the Thomas More estate on 240, which also has a right. solar field up there. Right. And they're just trying to break off the land that surrounds the house. According to Donald Lang, who is the executor, mm -hmm. um, this is with, in keeping with the will. Question: Has the solar field been approved by us? Long yes. Time, long yeah. So that so we will have seen that boundary. Yes. I mean those boundaries. Yeah, we have the the big this picture. This is is this far? This is four four acres off way off to the right. The solar field is. And does it? And the second the question is: Does it have the the surveyor seal approval subdivision approval not required on it? The ANR. We have a I, seal. I for a suggestion. Um, we have what's called the ANR checklist. So okay. That when people put in an ANR, we unroll the plans and we go down our checklist and we say, boom, 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 boom. Now, Christina was proactive on this, and my compliments. She got with the guy that submitted this and said, 
this is what you got to do to get it approved. Here's the checklist. Mm -hmm. So could you take us through it, unroll them? No problem. And go through the checklist and, and can I ask, what are we approving that? Okay. We would, we can tonight approve this. Uh, it's an approval not required plan to subdivide land and we can approve it if it meets all the checklist requirements and the file the checklist describes what the plan shows this is then you have to evaluate does the plan show something that meets the bylaw this is the mm -hmm. full okay. property okay mm -hmm. all up here yeah. this little piece right over here and there are several copies so that you guys can this is the proposed subdivision, including the wetlands. Okay, how does this relate to this? Fill me in. Okay, I'm sorry. This You're looking at, wait a minute. We're looking at, we're, we're looking looking at a four acre. You see that? There's Gardner Road. Gardner Road. Here's okay. Gardner Road. Yeah. And this here. So this is a Tom Moore's. Okay, got it. If you put here. it like this, you can right. see it. Yes. And the solar frame's exactly. up there. Right. Well, where okay. is the solar frame? Because uh, it needs frontage. Right. Oh, well, this is still all intact. All right. Which would have to be 200 feet, correct? Yes. Well, this is more than 200 feet. Okay. Where uh, is, there's two solar farms. On 240? Well, there's Got 238 there. and 240. Correct. Um, two different names on I don't have that information. I can get that. I, I didn't. Kathy and Robert Newton, that's not our applicant. That's no. the abutter. Right. This, uh, and this is... And what are these pencil lines? Um, this is what he submitted originally to me. Well, I'm sorry, this is almost what he submitted originally to me. He did not have the wetlands on it. And I went on the GIS, access GIS map, and found out there were wetlands within the property and insisted that he take them back and, and draw the wetlands because that's on our okay, checklist. This. So he had to do this. Then I told him that I needed a map of the entire property, not just the piece that he was cutting off, mm -hmm. uh, at which point he brought me this and said, can I please have this one back? <laughs> so this is for us, but this is the map of the entire property. I did not uh, grab a copy of where the solar farm, I didn't think of that. But um, like this is that. the entire, okay, this is the entire property. And this is what he is, he's cutting off. And this is our... Take us through our checklist. Our checklist. And just so everyone knows, this is his letter of authority for personal representation of the property. However, it is dated July. I told him that based on your decisions, he may have to get an updated one. He did when the solar farm went through. They needed to make sure he was still authorized to represent the property. Right. And that one's six months old. But I, he Just gave me that six months one. some kind of a deadline? Or? No, but it could, it's a matter of determining the, the property's in probate right now. So he's a representative until the will is executed. I, 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 I don't I think, think he can record that plan without an updated <laughs> certificate. I mean, that's... We're entitled to one, too, I suppose. Okay. That would mean a certificate that is dated pretty close to today. Yeah. Yeah, and I told him that you guys might require that, but I wanted to bring it to you. But we could also approve pending our clerk's receipt of an updated certificate if you want. Well, the thing is, is once you sign it, he's, he, or I'm sorry, once you sign this, um, he's, he's he's good to go. Out. So we might want to, you Hold know, on. just make sure we have everything in I'd like to see the uh, solar farms on there. Where it is on here. Yeah. Mm. I don't okay. okay. Isn't it, is it not this parcel? No, it's <coughs> you see this thing here, lease area. This pencil on a drawing like this it's doesn't make it for me. Um, but I would. This this is the lease area for their incoming driveway, and a set of eight poles. Uh, right. Then the lease the lease uh, driveway goes on up a hill here, and there's solar, the solar fields farm. here, and over here is the railroad tracks. I think. Yeah, that's here's, here's I have Railroad official company. plans, I believe, from the 240 Gardner Road. Mm -hmm. I we, might be able to pull those. We need the Borrego those. drawings. You want the, I have the Borrego oh, drawings good. Yeah. for I'd, this. I'd like to see those, like Tom said, I think it makes sense. Let's consider this a preview okay. of the land uh, layout, but also a preview of how we do A&R. Right. What I remember is that there should be a Mylar and a whole bunch of other ones. We, we used to sign five and six drawings, right. didn't we? Well, we were t the the checklist only requires three. Oh, and we've got like three got here. Three, okay. Yeah. okay. Okay, I didn't see that. So yeah, that's property boundaries, north point, date, and scale have to be on it. So this is the this is the checklist. Why don't you go? Yeah, you go down the checklist, and we'll we'll do it. We'll see what we have. Okay, we've got the north 
North Point. North Point is the arrow. Yeah. Okay, property so boundary. Um, these are the yeah, here's the Gardner boundaries. Road, and here yeah. are the property boundaries. Yes, yeah. right. Date and scale. Should be over here. The scale is it's got to be here somewhere. I don't see it. It's here. Right here. here. Yep. Oh, there okay. it is. Yep. Oof. Okay. And here's a date: 11 okay. Yep. Um, like name that. of of the record owner, name of the registered land surveyor. That's here. Yep. Zock Estate of Thomas there. R. Moore. Yep. And the stamp Zock. over there was Zock. Mm -hmm. uh, and the Worcester Registry of Deeds book and page reference for conveyance to record owner. That's here. Owner yep. book. Or okay. Yep. Okay. Page. page Area of each lot. Shows on yep. the plan. Yep. yep. There's only one lot on this plan. However, when you take a, and, and Zock should know this, when you take one lot and you make it into two lots, you are, two, two things happen. You pay two A&R checks. I think it's $175 a shot. See, I, I asked about the, at, um, several people at the thing and they said it was one because they were only creating one new lot. Well, they created well, two because they they're split They're creating two lots, yeah. Okay. You got the, yeah, you got the, you got the, you got the, the new lot that he intends to break off and you have the, what is now a new, newly they shaped have lot. And they have to record that. that. Is, yeah. Out of curiosity, then why would we ever put $175 on the website? No one would ever pay that, right? They'd always pay more than one. No. It's per plan. No. Um, oh, no, that's what I'm asking, though. Yeah. You I never pay $175. You're always yes, you creating would. two lots. Right? No, you're not. No, you're not. Um, we, we had several that we process as a singular lot. Um, I can't right now, as I as I stand here, can't give you a simple it. example, but um, I, you, I, you, I I believe we need a plot of the original large lot, okay, such as this, that. Mm -hmm. right, which is lot and three. then <coughs> a description of this one and a and description of that one, yep, and a check for this one and a check for that one, okay, and I will check with. Uh, Vin Ritchie, our historian, and, and or in fact, you can call Vin Ritchie, and and confirm that this is the this is the process, but this is what I remember, and um, I believe the checklist says something about a application fee for each lot. No. Okay, so sufficient data to determine location, direction, and length of every street and way line, lot line, and boundary line, monuments, or references necessary to establish those lines. I was going to go down it. Here it oh, is, the rest number of 10. In the case of the creation of a new lot, as we're doing here, the remaining land area and frontage of the land and ownership of the applicant shall be shown. Right. Where's the fee? There must be, there's a thing about the fee here. Up at the top. This plan will be submitted in triplicate with application form A, along with a submittal fee of $175 to the town of Hubbardston Planning Water Company by the necessary evidence to show that the plan does not require approval. All right, I'm going to have to check myself, but um, I, I know that this drawing does not adequately describe both the New and the form lot, which is why I had I told him that, and that's but why this he brought does in have this. a reference to this plan, which is probably sufficient because it would send you back to that plan. Well, I don't know what this plan is when it's got pencil marks on it. I mean, if that's if this is a recorded plan at the registry, which it well, says it is, see it, also plan book yeah, 453, have, plan 98. Is that this with, plan? With all due respect, I don't believe it's recorded with the pencil marks on it. Correct. Uh, I, I think what we want is one of these that shows what our checklist says he should show. And I'm very surprised that Zach, either I'm dead wrong, or Zach is, is surprising me by not being well, compliant. Well, that's why I pushed <laughs> back on him about this. Yes. I said it's not just number 10, it's actually also number um, 12 or whatever. There's a couple of other in here that also, including the wetlands, he has to show wetlands on both properties, and right. you can't do that if you can't see the entire property. Right, yeah. So I did push, that's why he sent in this, and I, again, well, I, I brought it in here knowing that you guys might push back and go, we need an official one. What's the date one. of this? This is, uh, oh, it's old. 
It's not only old, but it's been modified. So 14, 2014. Yeah, it's okay. A few years old here. Um, okay, so I'll have him. And uh, it says not a record written on it. Yep. Not a record, right? Okay, so written I'll, on it. I'll but make this sure this does reference a record that right. is recorded, a plan. Yeah, it, it, so maybe talking, we're talking about this one. So we need a full one. I'll make sure See, he this, knows that. This goes like this. All right, you got to show both See pieces. See that Got to have both pieces. And this is the part that is not described. That they ran out of paper here. They got to, they got to give us the rest of the world. Okay. Shrink, shrink it down a little bit. And if you could bring in the Borrego solar I will. drawings. <coughs> this is good exercise. We're, yeah. we're, we're getting oh, good. Okay. Uh, uh, do we want to keep going? Yes, please. Location, names, and present width of non-public private ways abutting the property. Brennan Road. Okay. Suitable space to record the endorsement of the board. Wait a minute. There's no widths on these. What? What did you say we did again? Location, names, and present width of non-public private no, ways abutting the property. There are no public. Okay, it's a private drive. It's not a way. Okay, got right. it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, suitable space to record the endorsement of the board approval yep. is not required. It. And the signatures of the members of the board. Um, zoning classification and location of any zoning district boundaries that may lie within the locus of the plan, which does not apply in this case. It's all residential. Zoning residential agriculture. Yep. In the case of the creation of a new lot, the remaining land area and frontage of the land and ownership of the applicant shall be shown, which is what I told him. And he, he didn't make it. No, that's why he, as I said, I think, <coughs> anyway. Location of all existing buildings, including setback and side and rear designations. And rear yard designations. He didn't actually give um, setback distances. Yeah. Normally that's on a new house. To right. prove that you're locating it yeah, according to the right. that. This was already approved. But this yeah. this main land has more than the minimum that's that's just the that's But but look it's a nine hundred I mean this is a huge parcel. Oh no, six sixteen acres. land, sixteen acres. And this is four. What acres. he's saying there is that there's um, upland areas, in other words, not wetland. Okay. That's what right, he says. Right. Right. A location of area of any wetlands on the lots being created by the plan, including the lot being created by the remaining land. In okay. In lieu of, because there's also another wetland here, according to the GIS access map. Which is, this should, says that should be Which will be within the 16 acres? Yes, which is in, within the 16 okay. acres. Uh, in lieu of delineating the wetlands on the remaining land, the applicant may provide written certification from the surveyor or professional engineer who prepared the plan that the remaining parcel of land contains the minimum required upland area. That's what that's saying. Which is why I think he put that in there. Right. But yeah. what is in lieu of what? In lieu of what? In lieu of delineating the wetlands on the remaining land. He didn't show the remaining land, okay. but he didn't, so. And then uh, ANR approval does not constitute compliance with zoning requirements for building purposes. That's what we have. Yeah, I think it needs a little work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I yep. think we need a the big picture, which is the 2018 <coughs> Borrego, or 2017 Borrego drawing. Yep. Um, and I think it needs to go back with a C size drawing with with this other lot on it. Yeah. It would be more and, appropriate. And uh, would you call Vince on the fee? On the fee. I remember sometimes we got one and sometimes we got two fees. Mm -hmm. And um, I want to be fair. Yeah, but every, and every time, if you're splitting a lot in half, then there's two different lots now. Yes. So. Um. Yeah. You see, that was the thing, is I found several that said 175, so I was like, oh, well, it must be right, 175 right. for the new lot. Don't, don't get I me don't wrong. Know, I'm so. not worried yeah. about the money. <laughs> all right. I just want to be, I just want to be what, what, fair to all applicants. Okay, and the point is, every time you pair up a lot, you then have two lots, right? Correct. You should charge for it. That's what a so. policy is from. So let him check. Well, let him check. Right. It's also on our fee schedule online, too. It says 175 per lot created. The, the, no. Yeah, well, it doesn't say yeah, created. It says per lot. Yeah. On the fee schedule, the 2000, year 2001, yeah. right. it says per lot. But I'm like, per lot created? So I didn't right. per I lot. Isn't it, isn't it true we're going to try to catch up with Vin in the next week or so? For affordable housing. Yes. I sent yeah, yeah. an email on that. Yes. Uh, we might be, it, it might be a lot easier to put this physically in front of him <laughs> and ask him about it than to try to describe it over the phone. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so if okay, we don't, I'll ask for we don't have to have this certificate as well. By, uh, we don't need this for January 9th. 
Okay. But we can get it by Correct. February sometime. Correct. Yeah, we'll have it for the February next, meeting. Next. He may be yeah. in a hurry, though, the executor, if they have a buyer for it or something. So. Uh, well, I'm uh, I, uh, this isn't recorded, so it doesn't meet the right. requirement of showing a recorded right. plan it's with the rest of the land, I'm no matter very what. Surprised. So. Zach is a very professional outfit. Oh, they're very I'm good. I'm surprised that he's not coming in, like, just, you know. Well, maybe he routine. can come in. Yeah. Well, he has people working for him, too, so. Yeah. Uh, it should be a more routine process than this. Okay. But very good on going down the checklist and taking all those initiatives. Okay. Where does that checklist awesome. exist? Can you email it to us? It is actually on the website under uh, planning board forms. If oh, you look it is. A okay. A and R plans. It okay. does say. Yeah, I'm gonna look yeah, at it. And yeah. I've, I've actually forwarded it to the, the people who've asked for A and R. It's like, oh, okay, good. here's the application What's and the here's the checklist. Is it A and R checklist? It's A and R. Um, I believe it's A and R checklist. I'm not sure. I don't have That's the website in front of me. Yeah, great. Uh, did we get through that? The plan of action, just, we don't have any motions, but the plan of action <coughs> is to determine yes. that there are no, or, or correct what we perceive to be deficiencies, and then bring it up to speed, bring it back in in February 1st, we can take it. Right, and I think I may give them a call just because I, I don't want to call this gentleman and get all this stuff rolling, and if he owes us another check, I want right, to make sure he gets first, that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah do, do it whichever way you feel comfortable. I was just saying, saying we okay. take advantage so of the fact that we're going to be face-to-face -face with him. The primary flaw is that there's no plan. recorded plan, plan of the remaining land. Yes, and we need the updated oh, yeah, representative. Yeah. Okay. And, okay. and we should assure ourselves that the solar system is standing on its own two feet. It, it doesn't, for instance, cross a boundary or, Correct. Frontage you know, or something with regards to this. Right. Yeah. It has its own frontage mm -hmm. and it has its own Which boundaries. Is important. Yeah, yeah. Very important. Mm -hmm. Especially with all the change there. Right. Recent change. Right. I don't want to reach back for a five year old plan. No. No. <laughs> okay. Oh. What else do you have in the way of administrative activity? Uh, nothing at the moment. Um, I've had. Uh, obviously that scenic road application which we're bringing up next week um, aside from that I've had a couple of uh, requests for um, like could you give me the A&R form but because they haven't come back it's sort of like it's a you're not sure if they're actually gonna move ahead with it right right so yeah you're just you, yeah. you have to hand out the you gotta get it for us one right. thing I think I remember us saying tonight was if you could add the scenic road to the little thing up in the corner of the website that says Contact the tree warden. Right. Right underneath there, say also check for scenic roads. And by the way, here's a link to the scenic roads list. Yep. What do you think we should put something more? Because just to put it up there, would, yep. would people be apt to click on it just to look, or should we say something about it? Maybe something like uh, uh, don't take down rock walls or trees. Just if something you live to on say, one of these roads if you and then do click. Click this. Right. If you, well, you know, it wouldn't. Well, or modify yeah. yes. any wall or cutting any trees, check our scenic bylaw. Yeah, have you, do you live on one of these roads? Click here. And they click in and they can get the list of the... It's not do you live. Um, it's are you going to enter this property with, say, a piece of equipment? Um, that's what usually happens. Somebody goes in and does a test perk or a test perk test hole. Yep. And they, they blow their way in with a pretty big piece of equipment, a backhoe. Or something. And then they don't put it back. They don't put it back and they don't, they, they destroy things in the process of doing this. So I don't want to restrict it to, uh, let, let's say um, uh, before work begins on a, on a piece of property, before any work begins on a piece of property, please click here. Verify <laughs> scenic road and Shade Tree Act compliance. Okay. Just something so they look at it. <laughs> you gotta comply. Right. Well, we're learning a little bit. Where are we now? We're up to the uh, public roll call vote, enter executive session, if we choose to. I'll read the whole thing so that everybody knows what's going on. Can I ask for a two minute recess? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> hey. Go for me while you're in there. <laughs> Christina's here. Sorry.
second. Yeah. Break. Question to the uh, Did you have a good holiday? For, um, there's lots of good housing, but mm -hmm. anything coming up? Oh, uh, for the 08, uh, the parcel is uh, 08064. Uh, it's that. But it's called 4C according to, and that's why there's a little confusion on the actual official notifications on the website. Mm -hmm. It actually says, I put in the parcel number because at the moment, Healesville Road well, this calls this, it this, lot this 4C. Here. It's this, and it goes all the way to the road. Okay, fine, because the way, it looked, <laughs> the way it looked on the map, it looked like it was the just one on French camp. That's why. No, no, no. As I said, it was a little confusing when I said 4C. What is 4C? <laughs> Are you on the GIS maps, Francois? I'm sorry? Are you in the GIS maps? I have no idea what map I'm in. But yeah, <laughs> it's, it's the access, oh, yes, GIS access GIS map. That's okay, access GIS. That's yeah. correct, yes. Okay, so I'm sorry. Did you ask me a question? Yeah, I asked if you had a good holiday. Yeah, <coughs> Santa was a little skimpy. He was, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Didn't get your Mercedes? No, I got like your <laughs> parasites. <and laughs> so I have a question for you. If we meet with um, Vince, and this is on the uh, open, he was the Affordable chair. housing. For affordable housing. Um, I want Francois to help work with me on that if we wind up doing it, but I'm a little concerned about open meeting laws and problems with that. Can he come to that meeting? Um, I guess I share your concern. Um, I was going to attend. Yes. Because I've got the history there. Okay. Ben, he's not a member. You and I would not form a quorum. Quorum, right. And he's only and an Christina alternate. Christina was going to attend. And I don't form a quorum she because I'm not a quorum member. And it, was, it isn't a special permit, so it's not so his. he's a non board That shouldn't member. affect Francois if he's not and a special Tom's permit. And Tom's already said he's not going to be on the Affordable Housing Committee. So right. that's not even a quorum for no, that committee. No, I'll be on it. I'm not going to run it. Oh, okay. Yeah. So then oh, that would be a quorum. Yeah. Because you'll be on the, all of you will be on the Affordable Housing Committee together. So if you oh, were that's all, right. Because then all of you, I, th then he'd be a voting member in that committee. That's right. We're not evaluating the planning board. We're yeah, I thought you weren't going to be on it, too. That was my understanding. No, that was I, my understanding. I want to offload the work. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I intend to participate because I have the history and I have revised copies of the plan. Well, the problem is hosting it as a meeting, we can't do it because we don't actually have a committee at this point, right? Yes, we do. Do we? Is the committee you mean? There was, there was a lot of talk in a prior meeting about whether the planning board has properly formed this meeting. And that is inappropriate. We have properly formed this meeting, uh, uh, formed this committee. We haven't, as far as we're concerned. Um, what we did was back in July, we made a list of who's going to be on what committees. Yes. And everybody on the planning board was entered into the Affordable Housing Committee. However, the Affordable Housing Committee has other members. For instance, the uh, select board has an ad hoc member. The only Board of Appeals used to have one. The only Board of Appeals is a member, a real member, mm -hmm. not a, not a, uh, not a uh, ex officio mm -hmm. member. I said ad hoc, I meant ex officio. Um, so we formed that uh, committee and we sent our names over to the select board. And people don't recall, but the select board voted us all onto that committee. So this is not the committee that put the plan together. It's, it's a new committee formed in July. Of that's, this year? That's correct. It has to be because people leave it and come back and they we've formed a new new membership Did and we are seeking other members. In fact the select board should be seeking other members. Uh, they should flesh this committee out uh, with members beyond just the planning board contribution to membership. Correct. Okay, well can Christina, can you get a copy of who was voted in? Who it's, the members were and I believe it's um uh, we had a table, and I can, it's in the, uh, Maybe some minutes July 11th meeting. Selections meeting? Was no, board meeting. I have a copy of it, and Alice, I can get it. Okay. And we need to add Alice to that and get her approved by the, uh, or appointed by the select board. Because you're not, you weren't there yet. I was informed. Uh, how about Joy said Francois ad hoc committees don't need necessary <laughs> appointments. We have appointments. <laughs> then. 
we have appointments. I remember going to the select board with our list of who's going to be members, and it was. Remember, you made the motion to accept the whole list. Okay. Um, I'll, it was I a did. table, and okay. it had the various committees and who was going to be on it with check marks or whatever, and um, that's the way we did it. And the select board said, okay, and right. uh, appointed those members to it. But you weren't here yet, so we need to get I wasn't you here, on. but there are other members besides our planning board is what that's you're That's correct. Right. There's they the ZBA guy and the, you know. I was on that for like six years, and nobody did anything. We what do you mean? A long time ago. Oh, well, that's gone. We, right. we reformed it in right. 2010 right. or 11 yeah. or something. Yeah, I wasn't on it after. Yeah. Right. Um, we, it, was, it was significant work done in the 10 to 12 to 13 range, and then there was significant work done in the 15, 16 range. Was there any work done after that draft plan? No, I believe um, the draft plan was about April uh 2016. 2016. Is that the date I have it? Somewhere in there. Yeah. I, I remember because we had uh, members of the committee or members of the planning board or the ad hoc uh, affordable housing committee that had some health, I health issues and we got involved in the Dirty Dirt project and we got involved in other projects that swamped the affordable housing effort. So if we want to pick up this plan, this draft, and try to get it submitted to the state for being what it is, knowing that we have already, we're into the next time well, period actually, very I soon. I spoke to them today. Yes? I'm sorry. I uh, was going to let you know after the meeting, uh, just so that you know, I did speak to them today. Who and we don't them? have to be, I'm sorry, the uh, Department of Housing and uh, Community Development. Right. His name was Phil DiMartino. Okay. Very nice gentleman. He said that um, it is not mandatory that we have this on file. Yes, we ours is expired. But basically, this is a way for us to be working f toward having a plan is a way to, even having a plan in place, even if you haven't executed it entirely, is a way by which you can say you're working towards affordable housing um, and have something to show in the face of, like, an application. You could be like, oh, okay, well, we have this plan on file. We don't need to have it on. We don't need to do an, a, a one in retrospect, which was what I asked him. I said, do we need okay. to go back and do it? Okay. Yeah. Um, he is also willing to uh, proofread our draft. Oh, wow. He also said we could talk to the MRPC because they are, um, by certain statutes, required to give us a hand occasionally, not yeah, free of charge. So we can talk to the MRPC. But these are all things that he, he brought up, and I was going to enumerate them to you. I just wanted to. I didn't know we were talking affordable housing tonight. So well, we drifted into it. We'll, we'll forgive ourselves. But, um, the affordable housing plan also makes you eligible, I believe, for I won't. I don't know if it's grants or just consideration. By other people like Montecito Regional Planning Commission, um, uh, Tom Brecker was effective at getting a, I think a five thousand dollar grant to get us the economic development chapter of our master plan, and we may have to be able to secure a grant to advance our affordable housing chapter. You know, cool. Yeah. So, uh, three so things: you need to get on the committee. <laughs> and what that means is we write a note to the selectmen uh, recommending, uh, well, no, first we should move the vote to recommend Alice to the Affordable Housing Committee. I make a motion that we vote, I make a motion to appoint Alice to the Affordable Housing Committee. Second. Jerusalem. I'll second that. All second. in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, so Alice. I'm sorry, Alice, did you vote aye on that? You yes, I'll, raise your I'll, hand. I'm happy to serve. Can we? You volunteered last time, Alice. You know, no, that's fine. I just don't now. know who this committee is, so it's kind of like. All right, we'll find out. But I'll find out. We can go <laughs> can over to the ninth, put it on the agenda, and I'll. Because from what I heard from um, Alice, he's willing to. I don't see any reason why we can't. There's two reasons yeah. why we can. Uh, I believe there's a place for a citizen, regardless of board affiliation. There's a slot for a citizen on that board, uh, on the uh, committee. ad hoc committee. Or he enters as a planning board. Well, he, he's not a planning board member. He's only a planning board member for special permits, and so we have to be we have to distinguish somehow. We, we, I suggest he come on just as a citizen. I'm not trying to you know diminish the planning board thing, but 
I suggest that that's what we do. We put his name forward, or he can put his own name forward to be on that committee, and the selectmen will raise their hands for Alice and Francois. I think that's what is best. You hate that. You, you, you want know? to put your own name in as the citizen I'd member? By you because that's what we I think, yeah, I think. What do you mean agreed to? I would like to have, have, have him she, on. It just she mentioned this to me that she would like to get me on this committee, and she has. All right, but you can't be first. you can't be on the committee. I'm, I'm going to put my foot down. You can't be on the committee as a planning board member because you're not a planning board. We never discussed the role at, that, uh, that I would be represented. Okay. So if I am going to be appointed or not appointed, if I am being requested considered, by yeah. you or considered as a member for this board as a as a citizen i would like you to make that so okay so, so we could write a note properly. to the selectman I, I i hear you loud and clear we could write a note to the selectman saying we recommend francois as the citizen's <coughs> participant or right citizens member yes fine we could do both so he That's could great. get on and we could work together that would be the great. reason the second reason for doing that is so that when we we meet uh like we're going to uh, going to here in the near future on the affordable housing committee he's recognized as a citizen because you don't have the open meeting on right away should oh no wait a minute if he if he is a citizen's representative to the ad hoc committee and the ad hoc committee has a meeting i believe we have to post it a meeting with a, with a quorum i believe we have to post it yeah which is no problem if right. we have a meeting next right. wednesday or something we have a if we have an ad hoc affordable housing committee meeting with Vin present and we sit around and figure this thing out, we can post that meeting. We can post it, but the proper thing to do would be to let the other people who are on the committee know no. that there's yeah. a meeting. So, so well, maybe that's the courteous thing. But you have if you are the if well, we don't have the chairman yet. Right. If you're the chairman, you don't really have to tell everybody. <laughs> uh, no, you don't. I mean it's courteous. I don't I don't want to start a um a bad thing. Here, here's what right, I when is the selectman if they're gonna they're going to meet Monday. I have a suggestion. Yeah. Francois, just hang back one week or two weeks, and then we can have our meeting with Vin. We have no threat of a illegal or inappropriate public meeting. It's just us two people. Okay. And we're not a quorum. We okay. Could just ask you to just hang back for two weeks. That's why I think it's best for you to invite me, and then it can be done that way. Well, yeah, but it won't happen for two weeks. We have to have, to have our first meeting. Figure this out. Let's get to the table, get the old list of who are the participants, and figure out what makes the committee <coughs> establish the committee, elect the chairman, get it rolling. That's the right way to do it. Okay. So but send a letter requesting both of us, and yep. I'll come to the. But this guy, this got us a do long I way. Have Maybe a this is this a motion? Yeah, I was going to say I have one for Alice. Do I have one for Francois? Because <coughs> um, I haven't heard that one yet. I'll make a motion that the Planning Board Committee uh, suggest or recommend Francois uh, to also serve on the Affordable Housing Committee as a citizen member. I'll second that. I don't remember the full numbers. Uh, you second all in favor? Aye. 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 That vote's done. I don't remember the full membership, but we had a DEA person, we had a citizen, we had couple of representatives from other boards. You mean in 2016? Yeah. We also had a, they also had a lawyer. Um, Tom Bracco's daughter, I believe, was on it. Well, yeah, but not as a lawyer, just as a citizen participant. Oh, okay. I mean, she is a lawyer, but... Um, so do we have my, now already a citizen? No, she's moved away. She's moved away. Okay, great. Yeah, I thought excellent. we were forming okay. a new committee because this one hasn't met in two years. Well, that's true. Okay. But she's not eligible to be on it. She's not a resident. She moved to some other state. All right. Okay. Alice, I'm going to give you that. If you get me, you, Vin, and Christina in a room, we can make some progress on that. Okay. To be clear, this is a new affordable housing committee. So basically, it's based on the vote you took in July of this year, 2018, of the board members at that time. Okay. Because otherwise, Vin would was a member of this committee in 2016. He's not still yeah. a member. He was not in the July vote because he was not, not on, on the board. Not on the board. And neither was Alice because she was not on the right. board. Right, got it, okay. So Alice needs to be. So this is just a meeting of, not really the affordable housing committee. No, it's just it's a just meeting. Just meeting of the minds. Just pull it together meeting. To figure out who's supposed to be doing what and where, why, where the ball got dropped. It's a meeting. 
when it's a good time for it. Any time that you can do it is pretty good to me. What? Call it Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. That's right, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Between 10 and? 2. You gotta stay up all night. How about next Tuesday? Okay. See if you can line it up. Between 10 and 2, right? That's good for me, you can let me know. Tuesday, between 10 and 2. I'd rather do earlier than later, but that's just me. I'm sort of a morning person. Okay. Get it over with. Yeah, well try okay. Tuesday at 10 and see if okay. we can come to that meeting. Okay, I'll we email then. Is that okay with you, Tom? Yes. Okay, just making sure. Yes, 10 o'clock Tuesday morning? Yep. Unless we are unable to. Can you do that February? I'll be up. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'll be up. <laughs> Anything else before we enter the uh, executive session? Okay. Uh, public. We need a public roll call vote, and uh, the motion is to enter the executive session pursuant to General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 21A, Part 1. Quote: To discuss the reputation, character, physical condition, or mental health rather than professional competence of an individual or to discuss the discipline or dismissal of or complaints or charges brought against a public officer, employee, staff member, or individual. Specifically, the board will discuss an open meeting law complaint dated December 6, 2018 filed against the board pertaining to a November 1, 2018 letter and meeting of November 7, 2018. The board does not intend to reconvene an open session and we will move to adjourn from the executive session and that will adjourn our meeting tonight. Whew. Um, that's the motion, I guess. Uh, you yeah. need a second? I'll second that, Bill Holmes. All right, and we need a roll call vote to do this. So. Yeah, we'll slip down aye. Bill Holmes, uh, aye. Ken Daly, aye. Tom Robinson, aye. Any roll call, any any votes within the meeting are also Good night. roll call votes. Good night. Good night, friends. Good night. Good night, friends. The person recording the meeting will be in shortly to disconnect and shut down the video.